We're going to have a full week six preview coming up on today's episode, which, by the way, I'm a little surprised to see the Chargers are three-point favorites on the road against an above 500 football team, making me wonder what does Vegas know. But really quickly, hit that sub button if you have not already. I'm trying to get to our next milestone of 26 thousand subscribers so if you are not subscribed to the channel yet please consider doing so and if you are subscribed hit that thumbs up button it's a great way to support the channel so with that being said let's jump into a full week six preview between the broncos and the chargers coming up right now What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome on into the Broncos breakdown. I want to run through everything you need to know going into Sunday, starting with some injury news on both sides going into this week of practice, plus keys to victory and my prediction for this game. But some quick NFL news to hit on before we get much further. Obviously, we've all seen by now the Jets fired head coach Robert Salah, which is which mind-boggling to me is they have kept Nathaniel Hackett, the defense has not been the problem this year. The offense has scored the same number of points in the first five weeks of this year with Aaron Rodgers as it did last year with Zach Wilson. So, yeah, naturally the issue is let's get rid of the only side of the football that is working for us. But that's the Jets for you guys. I was really hoping Hackett would be named the interim head coach. It would just have been comical to watch that all over again. But this time it's not our pain and misery at suffering here. But without further ado, Let's now start talking about the Broncos and Chargers. I want to begin the show by looking at both teams here with, you know, Denver playing five games, the Chargers playing four games, a good enough sample size to have an idea as to what team strengths and weaknesses are. As we look at the Broncos offense, it's still reeling a little bit, but I mean, they've played five games. One was a torrential downpour, so that's going to, no pun intended, water down the stats. And then the other one was, Rookie quarterback debut week one. I'm not going to read too much into that. But the Chargers defense, no surprise under Harbaugh, is playing lights out football. But what I am going to take a close look at is the Chargers offense against the Broncos defense. One stat in particular that jumps out to me is only four games, but Herbert and company have only turned the ball over twice. Meanwhile, Denver's defense through five games has forced eight takeaways, which is six in the NFL. So a little bit of oil meets water right there. That could be a big difference maker in this game. Do the Chargers continue to protect the football or do, this Bron do the Broncos defense continue to generate takeaways, which has been a big contributing factor, that along with the sacks amid their three-game winning streak. So now let's look at the injuries. So first off for the Broncos. Right before kickoff on Sunday, they unfortunately placed running back Tyler Bidet on injured reserve. I don't like when teams do this on either Saturday or Sunday. Saturday, I'm busy watching college football. Sunday, just sneaking that in right before kickoff, like all eyes are on the game, and now we got to deal with an IR assignment. So yeah, quick reminder on that. Alex Palchewski, who has done a phenomenal job of filling in for Mike McGlinchey at right tackle, he left Sunday's win over the Raiders early with an ankle injury. Luckily, x-rays came back negative, so we'll see how he fares this week of practice. But you're already down your starting right tackle, who's on IR, and now you're down your backup right tackle, potentially. And you've got a ferocious Chargers defense opposite of you, which is only getting healthier coming out of the bye. Not ideal. And then center Luke Wattenberg, he left early with an ankle injury as well. Alex Forsyth filled in for a little bit before the game ended. So definitely something to monitor for these two players. Now, as for the Chargers, they come off a bye, so they are well rested. They are getting healthy. Justin Herbert has been battling an ankle injury, which we'll look at closer later on in the video. Joey Bosa and Rashawn Slater on Monday's practice coming out of the bye were both on the limited side. Meanwhile, like Joe Alt, for example, appeared to be a full go. We won't get a full injury report with limited or did not practice or fully participated until Wednesday. But for the most part, the Chargers are getting healthy after a couple of early injuries. Surprise, surprise for the Chargers. But who you got in this game? Broncos or Chargers? Scroll on down, let me know. It's the pinned comment. So if a YouTube ad break comes on by right around now, take advantage of it. Drop a DEN for me in the comment section below. Let's peek at my first key to victory for the Broncos. That is winning at the line of scrimmage. This has been crucial for Denver throughout this three-game winning streak. 
They have found a run game, and they have been able to stop the opponent, opponent, opposing run game. Sorry. But for the Chargers, I mean, their bread and butter so far this year has been running the football. Anyone want to guess which two games they won here? Yeah, it's the game where they rushed for 176 yards and 219 yards. Meanwhile, the games they have lost, 61 yards on the ground and 55 yards on the ground. And the Chargers' run defense is very similar. Anyone want to guess which games they won here? 71 yards allowed against the Raiders, 90 yards allowed against the Panthers. Meanwhile, the Chargers and Chiefs both went over 100 yards. So it's pretty black and white for the Chargers when it comes to their success. Running the football and stopping the run, which is exactly what Jim Harbaugh did for a decade at Michigan. It's what he did with Frank Gore in San Francisco. He wants to win at the line of scrimmage. That is Jim Harbaugh for you in a nutshell. So try and take away his biggest strength. Meanwhile, Denver's run game has completely turned around after a horrid start to the year, 81 and a half yards in the first two weeks average. Meanwhile, the last three weeks, no surprise, 123 and a half yards and 3 and 0 in that stretch. And the same goes for the opposite side of the football in the trenches. 143 and a half yards per game in the first two weeks allowed, 90 yards per game allowed on the deep on the run side of things over the last three weeks. So just like the Chargers, the Broncos are having a lot of success when they run the football well and when they stop the run. And that's kind of true across the league right now with a lot of teams struggling to get consistent passing games going due to the dreaded too high safety. You want to beat the too high safety look? Then beat them on the ground in the trenches and force them to start stacking the box a little bit more. And that's going to open up things for your passing game. But with Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers coming to town, off a bye, well-rested, Harbaugh's not going to open up the game with eight or nine passes. No, he's going to want to run the football. He's going to want to establish dominance in the trenches. So it's up to Denver's Jimmys and Joes on the field to make sure they do not let the Chargers get their way. We have two more keys to victory to look at in just a second. But first, a quick shout-out to our sponsor today, Game Time. Game Time has an awesome feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. That way you don't have to waste so much time searching for the best seats and value out there. So download the Game Time app today to take the guesswork out of buying tickets. When you download Game Time, make sure to create an account and use code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code chat sports for $20 off I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video download game time today what time is it game time moving on to my second key to victory this one might sound a little bizarre I actually want to add a little bit more to Bo Nix's plate. I'm not saying pull back on the run. The run has worked well. But when specifically talking about the types of passes and types of throws we want to see Bo Nix make, I'd like to see a little bit more. I mean, let's go back to week one, okay? First game, NFL career start, 42 pass attempts was a crazy high number. But look at the chart here for a second, all right? Do we all see we're 10 yards beyond the line of scrimmages? Now count the green dots beyond it. I see one, I see two, I see two interceptions. Two completions, two interceptions, and a lot of misses beyond 10 yards. First game, we should not make too big of a deal out of this. Now let's fast forward to week five, okay, against the Raiders. Now let's look beyond 10 yards, and let's factor in 15 fewer pass attempts. He's got one, two, three, Four completions beyond 10 yards? I mean, Bo Nix way more efficient with fewer passes and a lot more of a spark play kind of quarterback in terms of picking up chunk yardage. So as the season goes along, I'm not saying we got to throw the kitchen sink at Bo Nix and ask him to just heave it deep every single time. It should be another completion, by the way, if Troy Franklin catches that deep pass. But regardless, we are seeing much better football from Knicks, let's start to add a little bit more onto his plate, right? 
Let's start and make defenses realize you are not going to get by with, well, it's a rookie, so we can kind of pull back on some things. No, let's start to treat Bo like a big boy. Like, let's start to take the training wheels off a little bit, and let's start to incorporate some more downfield passing. He has shown us in Tampa, and especially at home, that he can handle more deep throws after a rocky start. So I want to see the Broncos build off of Bo Nick's improvements, right? It's almost like a video game. He is unlocking the next level to start throwing the ball deep a little more. He put it on the money for Troy Franklin. Fortunately, receiver couldn't make the grab. But I don't want to see Denver stay still with Nicks, right, or start to go back a little bit. You don't have to run or pass the ball more, but just when you do call a pass play, let's see Nick start to air it out a little bit here because I think he's earned that so far. Third and final key to victory. I want to see some pressure on Justin Herbert, especially because he comes in limping. No pun intended. Unfortunately, it has not been a good start for Herbert's lower body to the year. Go back to the very beginning of training camp. He's got a right foot injury that has him in a walking boot. He misses multiple weeks of camp. He says his foot is 100%. Then, unfortunately, week two against the Panthers, he has a high ankle sprain. The next week against the Steelers, he re-aggravates that ankle sprain. He has to leave the game early. Taylor Heineke finishes the game. It's been a tough start for Her Her Herbert. Now, coming off a of bye, I'm sure he's feeling better, but I, mean, I don't think Father Time works that quickly. So I still think there are probably going to be some moments and plays where Herbert can't really escape the pocket or escape pressure because he's dealing with some bad feet injuries in the early goings of the year. And then you tack on his two starting tackles. Rashawn Slater dealing with a pec injury. I expect him to be able to play. Doesn't mean he's going to be 100%. Joe Alt missed week four with the knee sprain. That's their rookie out of Notre Dame starting at right tackle. So I've got a banged up quarterback. I've got two banged up tackles. you got to squeeze on those pressure points. Plus, Justin Herbert historically does not do very well when he gets a lot of sacks. I mean, he's 7-2 and two in his career when he's not sacked. He is 9-4 and four when you sack just once. But then when you get to 2-3 and three sacks in the game, 8-14 and 14 and 3-10. and 10. So Jonathan Cooper, Nick Benito, Zach Allen, Baron Browning's on injured reserve. These three guys have done a great job of stepping up. Rookie Jonah Ellis is doing a really nice job of filling in for Browning. Let's see these guys continue to have really good starts to the year and apply pressure to the wound which is a quarterback that might not be as mobile as he usually is, and two tackles that are playing through injuries right now. These are my three keys to victory for Denver. Let me know if you have one. It's always fun to hear from you guys. But I do want to know what your score prediction is because I'm going to give you my score prediction in just a second. But scroll on down and give me yours. I'm going to go Broncos 20-14. to 14. I am a little afraid that Vegas has the Chargers favored. Like, it's just bizarre, on the road, above 500 football team. Don't get me wrong, I do think the Chargers are a good team and they've got great coach in Harbaugh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Denver in this one. Give me win number four in a row. The Broncos improve to four and two.